Hey, what's up guys? In my last video, I uh, showed how to change the tires of the Q-Power uh, scooter. And uh, I didn't actually like show putting the putting the wheels back onto the scooter. Um, somebody asked about that, so I figured I'd do uh, something just on that. So in this video, I'm just going to be simply removing the rear wheel from the scooter and then putting it back on the scooter. Just to show you, uh, you know, the easiest way to do that. It can be a little tricky. Okay, so let's first of all take a look at the hardware we have on here. Going uh, up the axle from the wheel, coming out of the wheel, we have our axle. Then we have a uh, thick, flat, gold-colored washer. Then the axle passes through the fork of the uh, swing arm from the chassis. That's what that opening is. And then on the other side of the fork, there's another flat gold washer, but this one has a tab in it that locks into the chassis as you can see right there it has a metal tab that bends and goes into a hole in the fork so it kind of locks it into place that's kind of a special washer and then we have the nut on the outside of that same thing on the other side that inner gold washer off the motor passes through the fork the outer gold washer with the tab that locks into the chassis and the nut so first thing that we need to do is loosen those nuts on either side and back those off. Okay, so I got the nut loose on this side, and next is this washer that locks into that tab. Uh, I'm simply going to take a flat screwdriver, put into that slot there where the axle goes into the fork, and then simply use that to kind of pry out. And you can see it's uh, it's now come out of the slot over there, and I should be able to pull that thing off here in a second. There we go. Okay, so now let's take a look at that tab real quick. There's the tab on that side that goes into that slot there. Okay, I actually just want to show you this. The axle is actually not perfectly round. There's a flat top and a flat bottom. So, as you can see, the washers will only fit on one of two ways, either like that or like that. So if you do happen to take the washers off of the axle, when you put it back on, make sure they're both pointed the same direction and that they're both going to be facing towards the front of the scooter uh, to, to go into those slots right there. Uh, so that's all you got to be careful with that. The other thing is when you pull the axle out, not so much pulling it out but putting it back in, the axle has to be perfectly straight with the flat top on the bottom and top to be able to fit in that slot. If you have it crooked a little bit, then it's not going to fit into the slot. So it can only fit in this way or if you were to flip it around. Okay, so we got that hardware off. Going to do the same thing on the other side. Actually, I'm not going to leave this off. I'm putting this back on. Uh, I just wanted to show you that. All right, so we've got our hardware loosened on both sides now. In theory, now I can just grab the wheel and pull it back out of the forks. Uh, okay, a couple things now that might make this easier. Um, first of all, you, you need to have some slack in your motor wire. Um, you can see normally this wire is tied off up here to the chassis with a tie wrap or something, but when I take that off there, I can straighten this wire enough where if I had to or if I wanted to, I could pull my hardware back onto the wire. The more the more slack actually that you have right here, the, the more free it's going to be to move when you're trying to man maneuver the wheel in. Um, so that's one thing. Um, if you didn't have enough slack like this, or if you needed more slack, one thing you could do is you could take the deck off your scooter and you're going to have a chunk of extra wire at least this long inside that you could then there's probably some sealant or something over the hole but if you you could work that loose and then push more slack on this motor wire back out like that uh, to give yourself some more room to work with um, and that's the thing if this is loose enough you shouldn't have any trouble doing this okay next point is when putting the wheel back on you're going to have to line it into the slot between the brake pads, which is a very narrow space, so that doesn't give you a lot of uh, movement. Um, you have to be very precise, so that could make it harder. One thing I found, if you don't mind taking an extra step, remove the caliper. Take these two screws out. Keep an eye on your hardware. You don't want to lose that. There's like two spacers together underneath those screws. Keep an eye on those. And then these are just screws that screw into the bottom part. Take those screws out. Keep an eye on your hardware remove the caliper off of there altogether, and then it's gonna make putting the wheel back on so much more easy. 
and uh, I'll do that right now on this one. I'm going to remove the caliper. So for both the screws on the caliper of this scooter, uh, there's the screw on top, flat washer, goes through the caliper, through two spacers, and then screws into that black piece. Okay, I pulled the screws out and pulled the caliper off, and just, there's just look at those two spacers. Thicker piece goes on the bottom, and they're kind of rounded. Uh, so this top part looks kind of, it's kind of rounded, so it kind of bevels in, and then the bottom part is kind of like a bowl that it sits down into. Okay, so caliper's off there. I've taken my hardware and uh, set it aside where I'm not going to lose it. And uh, next thing is, I've got plenty of slack in my motor wire, so now I'm just going to simply pull the, the rear wheel back and out of the forks. Okay, one more thing to mention before we go ahead and re remove this rear wheel from the chassis. You want to make sure if you got up on a stool or something like this that you have some additional weight holding it down. Um, uh, if I didn't have that there, this, this weight of this wheel is, uh, you know, it's not extremely heavy, but it weighs down the scooter. So when you remove this, if you don't have a balance, then the scooter will tilt forward. So I always put like a cinder block or something sitting on it to hold it down to make up for the weight that I'm going to be pulling off. Okay, so now we're just going to pull this tire straight back out. And again, now that we got this caliper removed here, this should come out really easy and it should be easy to put back in. Uh, again, so I'm just going to pull straight back and the wheel easily comes out of the forks there like that. Now again, see I got a nice amount of slack in my motor cable over here. So I could flip this back up and set it on the deck or put it on a block or something like that. Okay, so now that we had it off, we're just going to simply do the same in reverse to put it back on. We have our two openings in our forks. We got to make sure that we align the flat top and bottom of the axle to go directly parallel into those slots and then we sh just the next thing we just have to worry about keeping our inner washers on the inside and the outer washers to the outside and you just set it back in there without having to worry about lining up the rotor and the caliper because we removed it it's going to make it a lot easier so let's just slip it back up there again making sure our tabs on these lock washers are facing that way so they lock into the holes simply just sl slide it back up there now let's double check our hardware on this side coming from the motor we have the motor we have our inner washer we have it going through the fork we have our outer lock washer and I'm now just slid back into that tab there this side motor inner washer fork and then the outer washer with the lock tab we're going to put back into there into the, so it goes into the slot and then the nut. So our hardware is good, we're aligned. Uh, I'm just going to tighten these by hand now. Snug it up a little bit. Okay, so you can see the uh, washer with the tab. The tab is now going into the slot that's in the fork. And uh, make sure it's going in on both sides. It sits in there nicely. And then go ahead and take your wrench, which I believe is 20 millimeters. Um, I don't have a 20 millimeters, so I'm using a 13 16 and it seems to fit on there pretty good. Uh, but then just tighten these back up on both sides. After that, we'll put the caliper back on. Okay, so I got my uh, nuts tightened on this axle. Now without this caliper on, the, the wheel's just free spinning. And uh, so now it's much easier to put the caliper on now than it was to try to put the wheel on with the caliper mounted. Um, we gotta get our hardware right here. And uh, basically you just want to slide, now that you can see uh, your brake pads in, in between there, you want to just center it over the rotor so it slides down there. Uh, now again, we got to put our, those two spacers in between the back black part and the red caliper. They go in the middle and then a washer with the screw through the top. Okay, so I got those screws and the hardware, the spacers in there. And I haven't tightened them down all the way because we need to adjust this now a little bit. 
Uh, the holes that these screws go through are, are not perfectly circular, they're kind of oval, which gives you the ability to uh, move, move the front and back end in and out. Uh, and the reason for that is you can then space it so it's not rubbing on your rotor, your brake rotor. So basically before I tighten these down, I want to try to move this around to where it should be. I'm going to just hold this down tight with my hand, spin my rear wheel, and I can hear it rubbing somewhere. So actually you can look down in between there uh, into the slot where the rotor goes if you have enough light on the other side and you can kind of see where it's rubbing at. Okay, so basically what you do now is you just kind of take your one hand and you move the caliper back and forth like this until you can find a spot where it's not rubbing. You can see I got a, a, you know, quite a bit of movement there uh, on both sides. Six little patience. Okay, so that's pretty good there. I've got it in a position where it's uh, not rubbing hard on the brake pads. Uh, okay, so now I'm just, while I'm holding that as best as I can, I'm going to tighten these up. I don't want to crank one side before the other, so I'm just going to not put a whole lot of pressure on that, tighten it down a bit, and then do the other side the same. Okay, then at that point I'm going to go back and tighten up a little bit more a little more torque on them. And there, that's perfectly quiet now. So that's how you adjust that. If you have any rubbing, you can do that same thing. Just loosen these two bolts. You can adjust this back and forth. Play with it a little bit and you should be able to find a spot where it doesn't make any noise. So got that back on, got a rear wheel mounted, everything's good, we're done at this point. Um, again, having slack in your motor wire and removing your caliper makes it so much easier. It's, it's, it's so simple at that point. And uh, then it, it's not hard to adjust this thing. It took me maybe three minutes when I put the caliper back on to get it adjusted so it's uh, not rubbing on anything. Um, okay, now next would be the front, front wheel. Uh, I'm not gonna go over that, it's the exact same procedure. Um, so I'm not going to show the front wheels exactly the same as what we just did here. Remove your caliper, make sure you got enough slack in your motor wire, and uh, it, it comes off really easy, goes back on pretty easy. Okay, so uh, one last thing on this video, uh, I want to i uh, let you guys know about these tires here. Some, somebody's been asking me about uh, where I got the tires at. Um, so I got these off Alibaba. Uh, I'll link the, uh, uh, the information down in the comments where, uh, where you can go to get these. Uh, this uh, particular guy, I got his email. I'll link it down in the comments. And uh, he can help you out with getting these tires. And uh, I also list the dimensions down there. Um, here's the new tires. I paid, yeah, I think, like 135 bucks for four of these, including the shipping. I got four of them because uh, the shipping was like half the cost, so I figured, well, I might as well get two sets then, uh, so I'll have them for later. Uh, and there they are. They also have the original CST off-road tire, so if you need uh, a new one of these, they sell those as well. And you're going to find you're going to save a lot of money compared to buying them other places. Um, so I uh, wanted to give you that information as well because uh, some people were asking about that. And I got them on my Q Power now, and this thing rides so smooth. Uh, as you can imagine, compared to a knobby tire, I don't do any off-road riding with this. I'm strictly on the street, and uh, that's what I did it for. I wanted to get a smoother ride, and it's such a different, such a different ride compared to these tires here. So uh, that was my goal. It came out pretty good, and uh, yeah, I customized the scooter, made it look a little different. All right, guys. So uh, check down in the comments if you want information about these wheels, these tires, and uh, if you got any other questions, let me know. All right, take care. Peace.